Response surface design basic. In the earlier analysis, analysis of variance, we have seen for one particular variable, so let's say the high level of A is significantly um, better in impacting the response Y, or low level of B, for example, affecting the response or or producing more response in Y. Now, in that kind of situation, you only conclude just one number. Let's say 70 degree Fahrenheit is significantly comfortable than 90 degree Fahrenheit, things like that. On the other hand, in response surface, you see a wide uh, range of area. If you look at the blue center, where you have the response less than zero, um, let's say we are studying discomfort. So zero discomfort means better. So in this blue area, if you look at the variable A, which is starts somewhere from just below point, negative 0.5 to uh, about 0.5, and the factor B is around the same in that area, so it's not just one single uh, level of A or one single level of B. It's a wide range of area, which is more practical. If you think about um, setting a room temperature exactly at 70 degree Fahrenheit, it will be more expensive to maintain like that. Now, instead, you can do like, okay, let's say between 68 degree Fahrenheit to 74 degree Fahrenheit. So in response surface, it will give you a little bit more idea. Now, the right, right figure, this is called response surface, and this one is contour plot. Now, a lot of time contour plot is way much better in explaining the findings compared to the response surface. However, the whole thing, analysis method, is known as the response surface methodology. Now in the next, uh, I will show you how to um, create response surfaces mini tab, analyze the data, things like that. So if you go to stat in mini tab, DOE response surface, create a response surface, um, let's say just two factor study, let's see what's the design available, uh, use a full factorial design, hit OK, hit OK. So mini tab will create the experiment for you. And then you, this is the factor A levels, factor B levels, and then you collect that data data y. Now I have copied this in Excel and let's say uh, this is my response corresponding to uh, this level of a and b. And once you copy that data in Minitab, let's uh, copy that in Minitab. I'm going to copy the whole thing here. Let's delete that, copy it here. And then uh, what you already created the design, now let's go analyze it. You collected the data. So after you created the design, collect the data, response Y, and then copy back in Minitab, and then select the response Y, and then just hit OK, it will produce the result. Now you go to the ANOVA, and then DOE, let's create the response surface. Uh, this is the contour plot, just simply you hit OK, DOE response surface. Let's create the response surface. So I'm not going to change anything. I'll loop, keep everything default. Um, so you can create the response surface um, design and collect the data and analyze it in Minitab. Now, to understand what Minitab exactly did behind the scene to produce this, um, this design and how to do um, these designs. I have the whole list of videos for um, this analysis. So in the openeducator.com, so you can visit here the openeducator.com DOE slash DOE. This is where I have the details response surface methodology videos to you can manually create to understand each steps behind the scene, what it is that Minitab doing to create the design and to analyze it and things like that.